some uh, new stuff. Okay, well, let's go ahead and, and get started with our, our Bible study tonight. Genesis chapter 30 is where, where we're at. Hopefully, we'll be able to get through chapters 30 and 31 this evening. So, any, uh, any prayer requests before we open with a word of prayer? Okay, all right, let's go to God. Father and Lord, we thank you this evening for this time that we have, um, this opportunity the blessing that we have that we can open up your word. We know as, as we talk about oftentimes, there are many countries that do not have this luxury and this privilege. And so we give you thanks and we give you praise that we do in this country. We pray for our country. We pray for our leaders. We pray that they would understand um, that one day every knee will bow and every tongue confess Jesus Christ. And we pray that they would have a heart's desire to serve him now. And so we pray for them. Strengthen them against, uh, against Satan. Pray for those who need salvation. Pray that uh, they would be surrounded with those who would preach the gospel to them. Father, we pray for this Bible study. Pray as we, as we move along in this Genesis study that you would help us to uh, fully grasp and understand the things in which you've written down for us to learn. And Father, uh, we thank you for each person that's here. And pray for those who couldn't be with us, um, and thankful for those who are joining us online. It's in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 30. If you remember right, we were back in chapter 29, dealing with Jacob and uh, Rachel and Leah and Laban, that situation there with Jacob getting tricked uh, by um, his father-in-law, having to serve uh, 14 years uh, for the woman that he wanted, uh, seven that he was tricked for, and then another seven um, to, get, uh, uh, to get the woman that he wants, although he, he got her before the seven years was up. But um, don't want to cause any confusion there. Um, but Laban, again, we, we saw, we've talked about over the past a few weeks of this study here that Laban is, uh, is quite the opportunist and we'll continue to see that as we go through here in chapters 30 and 31 um, but um, as much as we've seen and we've talked about Jacob not really seeming to have much of a heart for God um, we're going to see that sometimes um, you better finish reading the story before you you, you know you know, decide what the situation is, is because what we're going to see here is Jacob is going to um, reveal um, to, to his two wives that uh, God has been talking to him. And God has told him to get up and leave, and, and Jacob is ready to do so. And we see some things by Jacob to show that, um, that he's uh, putting his faith in God. And so it's encouraging to see that part of Jacob come to light. And that's why, I, you know, some people, whenever they're, they're teaching the Bibles, the Bible, they want to read into the scriptures, and we got to be careful not to do that. And so even when we talk about, like we're getting ready to see here in, in the first few uh, verses, um, that Rachel doesn't have a child, and it doesn't say that Jacob entreated the Lord, we don't know that he did or didn't. So, yeah. Did his wives worship other idols, though? Uh, they certainly must have prior to Jacob. Now, we don't know what Jacob allowed. Now we will see. Because when wasn't it Rachel that stole mm -hmm. stole Laban's uh, idols, which we'll be talking about tonight if we get there. But yeah, she stole <coughs> them. It doesn't say why she did it. Is she doing it out of spite? You know, some commentators suggest it's out of spite. Some suggest because um, she's trying to um, you know secure her husband as the next heir of the family. The Bible doesn't give us any understanding of what it is, but we do see that whenever Jacob goes to to Rachel and Leah and says that that God uh, told uh, told me that we need to do this, they're both like, okay, you know, do what God says then. And so, um, but we do know that Laban and his family worshipped these other gods, and that's going to come into play a little bit here. And so. Um, if you remember the mindset, uh, as we see throughout Judaism, and, and all of us are aware of it, um, if you know anything about Rome and all these other countries, 
they don't have a problem with there being 5,000 deities out there. You know, you know they're, they're constantly, your God is this, your God that, under, not understanding that you can't have that many gods. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. And so um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, that. But again, we don't understand, we don't know um, their, their <coughs> belief system. It doesn't really say. Uh, what what it does, uh, what I think we see through the moral of, of this story through Jacob, if there was one thing to describe the whole thing, is that um, that God is choosing to bless Jacob, and he's, he's fulfilling the promise of, of Genesis chapter 12 with Abraham. Those who bless you, I'm going to bless. And so there are the blessings of Jacob overflow to other people. Even Laban, he acknowledges in, in one of the verse, verses we'll see tonight, he acknowledges that, that blessing. But then later, he denies it. So, very, very interesting. All right, verse 1, chapter 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I... Am I in God's stead, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And so we don't have a record here or anywhere that Jacob entreats the Lord for the sake of his wife. Uh, it would be, you know, is that supposed to tell us something? Maybe. I think that it might be something you keep in the back of your mind or in your back pocket, but I wouldn't go teaching that uh, Jacob didn't do it. We don't, we don't know. But if you look back in chapter 25 here, we see that um, um, that's, not the, that's not the way um, his father handled it. Look at chapter 25, verse 21. It says, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Um, and so one, one big difference would be what? Did anybody notice know the big difference here? And this doesn't really bode well for Jacob. <coughs> Isaac entreated the Lord. Yeah. And Jacob and Rachel have not. Right. Yeah. And and so, you know, what what is interesting here is is um, Jacob's got kids with Leah. So, you know, yeah, he's he's got kids with Leah. You know, is that maybe why he didn't entreat for for Rebecca? I'm not suggesting that's the case. We know he loved her. I can't imagine that he didn't, his heart didn't break for her. He obviously gets mad when she wants to blame him for the fact that um, uh, they're not having kids. I mean, it's cr pretty obvious that it wasn't him that was unable to have children. And so he gets mad and uh, he gets, gets upset with her. Um, but uh, does he end up uh, entreating for her? Again, there's no, no indication. Verse 3, and she said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, Go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. Uh, and again, we saw this um, in the past with um, Abraham and Sarah. Didn't work out too well in that situation. Um, it's not generally a good idea, although we're told that this was quite commonplace and custom of the day. And, and I've already spoken on the fact that um, God wants to call us out from man's customs and man's ways. He doesn't want us to mix them with him. And so here we got them doing something that was, you know, the ways of the world. Uh, we see today, Paul makes it abundantly clear that you used to be this. And you see the other Gentiles doing this. Don't do that. You used to be that. You're not that anymore. I don't think that's unique to the body of Christ. I think that is what God has wanted for anybody to, who calls on his name to be separate, um, separate from the world. And so that's a universal truth. Uh, but yet, again, here this is the, the situation. But God is going to uh, go along with it. Verse uh, uh, 4, And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. And here you, you, can, under, you can see here this um, phrase to wife is again shows the the uniqueness of a physical relationship um, that moves to that that intimate part that intimate part of a relationship is meant for husbands and wives and here 
it's it's I don't I don't think that the 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 the, the thing that's being told to us is they went and had some marriage ceremony. The idea is is that he went into her tent and and they had a you know intercourse. And we get this phrase here, this suggestion to wife. Um, to me, and again, it just shows the importance of that that sexual relationship um, um, and that that threshold when it changes. Uh, we need more husbands and wives that um, wait for that. We need much. We need we need to teach that the importance of that. Unfortunately, Christianity today it <coughs> seems like they no longer even consider that important for people to wait for for sexual relations until marriage. But here again, I think that we see uh, the, by the inspiration of God here is is that He went in and and He took her to wife because of that that relationship. So, verse five, and Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. Um, and what we're going to see here, if you take notes, if you do that, um, chat, or verse three through thirteen is ultimately what we're seeing is is the maids of both Rachel and Leah um, are going to bear children for them. Leah is going to end up doing the same thing. Um, what we're going to end up seeing throughout this whole thing is it's going to turn into some, some kind of wacky competition, competition between the mm -hmm. two. And, and I say wacky, but I, I don't want to um, really disparage their, their heart of the matter. Um, Leah literally longed for the love of her husband. That's what she longed for. Um, Rachel longed for children. And so... With tender, with tender eyes. With tender eyes, yes. So it's not a bad thing. But again, um, and, and if, again, if you if you um, uh, are curious about it, you're going to end up having uh, Dan. Um, we've heard of the, tri the tribe of Dan. Uh, that son mm -hmm. and Neftali are going to come from um, Bilhah, which is Rachel's... Um, made and Rachel will end up giving birth Benjamin and Joseph Benjamin and Joseph those will be the two by Rachel and then um, you'll have Leah and Zilpath Zilpath is um, going to um, produce Gad and Asher and then Leah will end up having six of the sons and then the one daughter so Leah we have uh, uh, seven children by Jacob mentioned and so, um, here we have the, the the different breakdown of who's who's going to bear bear who. So, um, verse. Uh, so there was 12, 12 that were the the um, precursor for the uh, tribes. Tribes, yeah. right? Twelve sons of. There were, ex there were extras. Right? Yeah, there was um, um, Dinah, the daughter. That's the one that ends up getting in the relationship raped so to speak I don't know if it was raped so to speak but um, but yeah he's got uh, 12 sons and uh, the one daughter that we know of so there's no more than mentioned that I'm aware of so and, and again what's interested in is is that all of those kids all of those children the sons are counted as of the tribes, right. 12 tribes. It's not just from Leah and uh, Rachel. So they're all legitimate, technically. They're all legitimate, part of it. Now, we do see a couple of them that end up getting thrown by the wayside, but that's because of the things they do, not because of where they came from. Just, if you don't mind doing a little rabbit hole thing, is uh, when the tribulation occur, or the, uh, what's after the tribulation? The, the kingdom, thousand year reign. Right. Millennial kingdom. Yeah, then... That's where the 144,000, the, the 12 times 12,000 occur. And, the, and those tribes are not, we don't know what those are yet, right? Yeah, nobody knows today, uh, Jewish-wise, what tribe they're from. Those records have been lost. Right. You'll it's see. It's interesting because, like, they're so meticulous and so fastidious about keeping records. Sure. I think that's why they are the chosen people, yeah. frankly, is because they're really good at it. And, um, yeah. Yeah, they, those were those were lost whenever they were basically booted out of out of Jerusalem and scattered. Right. Uh, remember, they were scattered for nearly two thousand years, for the right. most part. There were small groups who did stick around a little bit, um, and um, but for the most part, they were scattered. And so, yeah, you have these twelve tribes. 
Uh, Jesus says to, said to the 12 tribes that, I, that you are going to sit on 12 tribes, judging the 12, or 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes. And then we see in, in the book of Revelation, whenever we have the new Jerusalem, everything is by 12s. It all has to do with the nation of Israel, that new Jerusalem, that holy city. And so, and it's all based upon these, these the symbolism of these 12 sons. And so oftentimes, what do you see? Even in little things in the Old Testament, where somebody will set up 12 stones, you know, for this place. And, and so it's, it's not just in those famous exercises in the Bible, even oftentimes in these, these small situations, it's these, this, these 12, which goes back to these 12 sons um, of, of Jacob with, with Bilhah, with Zilpath. And, um, 12 months and a dozen donuts. Yeah. The whole thing yeah. is all false. Sure. And the, the uh, decimal system is in contrast, stark contrast to that. And part of, I think, you know, sort of a, something that could be another, sure. dis another discussion. Sure. And then just one quick other thing. Sure. Is, yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, you talked about uh, other gods and, and that sort of thing. I'd submit that Rome viewed that or. Re um, use that as a way to pacify the, the masses, mm -hmm. you, know, to, you, know, yep. you know, just as governments today do, sure. really, and make deals, like in the Commonwealth, in the UK, uh, in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, with Hitler and whatnot, and, you know, and all that. Sure. And it's still going, nothing new under the sun thing. And it really, you know, throughout history, obviously you had different people who conquered uh, different groups. Alexander the Great, he was known for, he would take over a place and let you have your own gods, right. let you do your own thing, as long as he was he was the man in yeah, charge. And they only had to deal with one head muck muck of right. that religion. And even whenever Rome conquers and takes over um, Israel, right. they let the same thing. Yeah. It's not until Israel um, won't, won't conform to the mini-god thing right. that and they start and to rebel people. against Rome, that Rome says, now you can't even exercise your one belief, and they forbade it. Right, and, and people like uh, Bonhoeffer, you know, in German, and Lutheran, and uh, Martin Luther, mm -hmm. even probably even a bigger, better example in the Catholic faith, you know, and how they question it, mm -hmm. and actually take God's word for, you know, you can't dispute the truth. I mean, you, you can try, but you, you right. won't succeed. Sure. Yeah, the truth truth exists whether people believe it or not. Right. And and that's what some people, they got this idea that somehow we have our own truth. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Good luck trying to tell that one to Jesus, yeah, right. you know, when the day comes. That ain't going to happen. Yeah. So, you know. That was just a really good point you brought up is where I was going with all that. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And so here, again, what we're seeing here in verses 3 through 13 is um, we get this list and we'll read it of... of this child was born, and this child was born, and this maid servant per, had this child. Um, so um, here we have uh, verse 7 in Bilhah, Rachel's maid conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. And so again, we see this, you know competition and, and again I mean it's going to breed that situation I mean because you know in that day and age they didn't like necessarily live in under one house Jacob would have a tent and Leah would have her own tent and Rachel would have her own tent the the handmaids would have their own tents and you know you probably know because you're probably worried about which ones which tent is Jacob going into tonight you know, think of the drama that this is all causing. And, and, and that stuff is going on, and we see this, this inner turmoil um, that, that is going on. And, and again, I'm not going to um, be the first to cast a stone other than to say, you know, the what ifs. What if they wouldn't have done all that stuff? What if they just literally relied on God? Um, I, don't, I don't know what the situation would have been. Uh, uh, all we can do is go study what, what's said here and, and realize that uh, I'm no better than any of them in any way. So I can't expect I'd have done any better. Um, verse 9, when Leah saw that she had 
left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And so we don't necessarily know what that means by when she left bearing. <coughs> um, I mean, is it, some suggest that Jacob stopped going in unto his wife. I don't think that you can really get that from, t- from the text. Um, but um, for whatever reason, she's, she's not conceiving apparently. And uh, so she gives Jacob um, her maid. Again, um, trying to keep up with uh, her sister. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bore Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh. And she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Uh, and so here we again, um, we're, we're seeing all of this. In verse 14, we're going to see this introduction again. We're in chapter 30. Um, starting in verse 14, we get this introdu- intro- intro- introduced to us, this like fertility type of fruit. Uh, I have no idea what a mandrake is. Uh, somebody else may know what it is, but as far as I know, we don't really know what a mandrake is. I'll be an expert here in about five seconds. There you go. <laughs> but, I know uh, it's a mandrake duck. I know that, but yeah. okay. I don't know if that's even... <clears throat> and so here we see in verse 14... Mandrake. Did you find it? Uh, yeah. Uh, mandrake is the, uh, the root of a plant, historically derived either from plants of the genius uh, Mandigoria found in the Mediterranean region or from species such as uh, I don't know. Yeah. Well apparently it was thought to be a fertility type of uh, ingredient. Verse 14, And Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Uh, and it's almost as he, Again, is this suggesting another level of this competition that even the even the children are involved in this? You know, and so that that to me is a pretty interesting observation that we have here. Reuben goes and he gets a mandrake, and and we're going to see from this, it's believed by them already that it's a fertility thing. And so Reuben gives it to his mom and it says, Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And um, Leah's response here is quite uh, uh, short and to the point, to be honest with you. Verse 15, And she said unto her, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband and wouldest take away my son's mandrakes also? Um, And what is she talking about here? Again, I think, what was Leah's chief concern throughout all of this? That, that he loved Rachel more. That he loved Rachel more. Um, and so um, I think that's what this is a reference to. Is it enough that you've taken my husband? Because who was married to him first? Leah. 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 And so I think that that's kind of the idea is, is that you, you, you have my husband's love, and now you want to take this thing. I get to have the, the children, and you get to have his love kind of a thing. Um, and, and so it seems to me anyway that might be the possibility of the mindset here and Rachel said therefore oh wait um, yeah Rachel said therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes and so basically what's, what's happened here um, is that they're going to make a deal they're playing let's make a deal with Jacob and um, you know he can you can have him tonight uh, I get some of the mandrakes, and we're all happy here. And it just seems like a pretty odd situation. Um, and again, we're not told that Jacob does anything but go along with the flow here. Because in a few minutes here, um, Leah is going to say, I hired you. And what is she referencing? She's referencing this deal right here. I hired you. Come on into the tent, sucker. I need another kit. And so uh, it's kind of a... Interesting thing. And again, this is one of the reasons why you, you'll never convince me that this is man-made up. Because who in their right mind would say their origins came from people who were doing this kind of stuff? You won't see the Egyptians talking about themselves like that. You won't see any of the Romans talking about Matter of fact, the Romans said that they came from two guys that they are like gods. And so, I mean, it's just nonsense to believe that 
that this is anything other than God saying this is how it happened. This is the truth. And so, verse 16. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. So, again, he says, she says, I basically paid for you tonight. Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't sound like, doesn't sound like he was arguing too much at all. We don't see much in the way of problems. Certainly not yet. We're going to see some problems later, especially with uh, Jacob and his sons. There's going to be some serious problems with some of his kids doing some some pretty bad stuff. And obviously, again, if if. If these are the details that God is, has shared with us, imagine the day-to-day -day things that were actually taking place that we don't know. Um, so, Verse 17, And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. Now, again, I, I would say what's, let's take note here is God's Word made sure to include that verse 17 because does, is, does God suggest that the mandrakes worked or that he worked? So this is suggesting that God, that God did the work. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. And so um, verse 18, And Leah said, God hath given my hire because I've given my maiden to my husband and she called his name Issachar again I think here we have an example most likely of, of the thing that I preach out all the time don't speak for God where God hasn't spoken here I think Leah is speaking for God where God hasn't spoken she says that God did it because I gave, gave my handmaid to my, my husband well I mean I'm not, I'm not seeing anywhere where God said that I'm seeing that he hearkened unto Leah and it's, it wasn't because she said, oh, here, take my, take my hand. He, he decided to, to hearken unto her. Verse 19, And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And so here, this, this comes to the question. Um, we remember that what prompted her to give the, um, the handmaid to, to Jacob was because she stopped, as we saw over here, that she stopped um, having children and now all of a sudden she's had two more and so um, did she did she literally get to the po point that she couldn't have children anymore now keep in mind she's still likely a young woman she's not you know past the age of childbearing um, by the time these children are all born these um, uh, these 12, 12 sons and the one daughter um, it's only been 14 years that Jacob's been um, in Mesopotamia because at the end of the seventh year in which he worked for Rachel he's already got all of the kids um, save two but he was 77 or something right what at that he, time yeah. no I, I, I when he married um, the first uh, no you're probably thinking of Abraham yeah Jacob Jacob um, I don't believe we have an age um, I know Isaac was 40 whenever he married uh, Rebecca. I don't think we have an age for Jacob, but he would have been around 40. So yeah, when he left, they had all the kids. What's that? When he left Laban. He yeah, when he left Laban, he's already got the kids, mm -hmm. and so except for Benjamin and Joseph, and actually um, um, Joseph, I think he does have Benjamin is um, is the one that's born whenever Rachel dies after right, they've left. Right, right. And so you can see here, it's not like it's been 30 years. That, and so she's like in her 70s or whatever. Um, um, basically what I'm saying here in a nutshell is, is that whenever Jacob marries Leah, by the time she's, you know, had these two kids, it's been at most 12 years since that point. So. Well, do you think he started having kids with Leah before he was married to Rachel? 
Well, I think that he was married to Rachel one week after he was married to Leah. Oh, right. So. Um, one week? I thought it was seven years. No. Well, he wor still worked for him for seven years, but he did. He was, yeah, he was, <coughs> get, he said, he had to make a deal. Basically, Laban tricked him, and, and Jacob said, what did you do? And so he worked the seven years for Leah. He got tricked, found out the wedding night in the morning. He talked to Laban, and Laban said, if you agree to work for me for seven <coughs> years, at the, end of my, after, at the end of Leah's week, I will give you Rachel. Wow. So one week later, he's, he's with Rachel. And so and at the end of that seven years is whenever they're ready to leave. Now, granted, they'll end up, he'll end up serving seven more years, um, as we'll see, see shortly. But at this point, she wouldn't have been too old. And so, but anyway, she does have two more kids. Um, verse 20, and Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And so um, she, like I said, she will have had six sons, one daughter, and then um, Rachel will give birth to two, and uh, each of the handmaids will have two. So that gives us a total of 12 sons and one daughter. And here we get to verse 22. And it says, And God remembered Rachel, and God, God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Um, and so this, this idea of he hearkened to her uh, would seem to suggest that she pleaded to him. Um, doesn't demand that. The, 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 the language doesn't demand that that's the case, but it certainly is possible. Verse 23, And she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. Now that's an interesting statement because... Did God tell her that? Uh, we're not told that he did, but she makes that proclamation, and she's right. She's, she, does have, she does have Benjamin, which she will die uh, in the process. So, and so that's not going to happen, happen for a while. All right, verse 25. Um, here we get uh, um, a bit of the timetable of kind of what we were just talking about, the end of the, seven, the second seven years. Um, is so we see Joseph is born and it came to pass verse 25 when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said unto Laban send me away that I may go on to my own place and to my own country and so he agreed to stay for the seven years and apparently that seven years is up so we can see the timetable of all of these other children have been born to this point and so we don't have the one we're missing is Benjamin and so Joseph, Joseph, or Jacob is ready to go. He's ready to leave. Because as we're getting ready to see here, Jacob, Jacob is going to point out, um, which you haven't, unless you read ahead here, you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, have seen yet, is that Laban's been taking some serious advantage of Jacob. He's been, he's been downright dirty. Sneaky. Yeah. yeah. And what is the lesson that we should see from this? Sneaky, Jacob we see still honored his agreement. Um, is that a lesson for us? We're so easy to get mad. Well, they wronged me. Well, then I'm going to wrong them back. Well, did you know? he kind of trick him with the spotted? Did uh, Jacob? Yeah, and letting him mate with the stronger ones and letting Laban's flock turn weak? Well, I don't think you, and, and, and a lot of people would suggest that he tricked him. In reality, I think that the text, what we see is, it, is that it wasn't that Jacob tricked him. It's that he basically put everything in God's hands. As we're going to see, God reveals to Jacob in a dream to do that, that, he, that God was going to do that. Basically, it was, was the idea that he saw in a dream that, that uh, the spotted ones were going to increase. But what we do see is Laban, after he makes the deal, he goes and rounds up any of the spotted ones to help prevent Jacob from being able to have any spotted ones. And so he basically leaves him all of the, the um, one-coated, so one, white or brown or black, whichever it is, and, uh, and, and Laban takes off with him. And, and what to me it really is, is he doesn't care the fact that he's hurting his own daughters too. 
I mean, this is why what you see here that whenever whenever Leah says is that now she has a dowry. Later, what we're going to see is whenever Jacob goes to Leah and Rachel and says, "Hey, it's time to get up and go," and they're going to realize that Laban, their dad, has has had no concern for them. His only concern has been for himself. And in the end, um, God is is sees what's going on. Jacob fulfills fulfills. His, his promises in an honorable way. Um, does he come out and say, well, God told me that, that we're going to do this? Um, no, he doesn't tell Jacob. Um, should he have? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if God, you know, what the situation was there. But uh, what we do see is, is that um, he puts himself in a, in a situation, talking about Jacob, that unless God intervenes, Jacob is going to be penniless if God doesn't do something. But remember what God had said. Remember Isaac's blessing to Jacob. His blessing wasn't, may God do this for you. His, his, his blessing was, God will do this for you. And so he had these blessings straight from God. So, All right, verse, uh, where do we leave off here? Verse 22 Oh, I'm sorry, no, verse 26. So Jacob says, send me to my country. Verse 26, give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service which I have done thee. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for thy sake. Now keep this in mind later. Keep this in mind because later Laban is going to act as if um, that everything is, depends upon Jacob and it wasn't God's doing. He's basically going to blame Jacob. Laban's sons are all going to blame Jacob for how things turn out when in actuality what it was was, was God who intervened. And Laban who's saying, I see that I've been blessed because of you, he doesn't realize later after seven more years, whenever Jacob is rich beyond can be, he doesn't accept the fact that well, God chose to bless Jacob now because at this point, right now, when Jacob's asking to leave, he has nothing for the most part. Nothing. And Laban was willing to leave it that way. So he says, give me my wives. You know how I've served you. And Laban says, pray, I know that the Lord, notice that you, if, you, if you're if looking at your text, notice that the, the word that's used there for Lord is Jehovah. It's all capital letters. And so what we're seeing here is that Laban acknowledged that it was your God, not just the general God. It was your God. It was Jehovah I was blessed by because of you. And so verse 28, he said, appoint me thy wages and I will give. In other words, tell me what you want. And um, because it's really working out pretty good for me, I'll pay you. Verse 29. And he said unto, said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. For it was little which thou hast before I came. And it is now increased unto a multitude, and the Lord has blessed thee since my coming. And now when shall I provide for my own house also? Uh, a great verse to, of information here because here we see that Laban, um, according to this, didn't have a lot when it came to herds anyway. But now he's got a multitude and, and we see that, that Jacob acknowledges that it's because of the Lord. But he also says here a very interesting thing. When am I going to get to provide for myself? For these 14 years, I've had to work to increase your household and I'm what? probably around 40, 50 years old or whatever, and he's not had a chance to build up his household. He's looking for an opportunity for God to bless his household. Did you have something to say? No. Oh. Well, because all of Laban's sons would have gotten his inheritance and not his daughters, right? Right. So, yeah, I mean, Jacob wouldn't have had anything. And so Jacob, you would think, would remember the, the blessing of his father Isaac. Remember what he did to get that blessing. He tricked his brother. He caused a family feud like none other in order to get that blessing. And that blessing was that God is going to prosper you. And here he's saying that when do I get a, 
go get to do the, my thing here is what he's saying. Verse 31, and he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. And so here, in other words, what he's saying is, is I'll do it, but there's going to be a separation here. There's going to be a separation between what's yours and what's mine. It's no longer what's mine is yours and what's yours is yours. It's going to be what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours, is ultimately what we're seeing here. He says, I will keep your flock. He says, I will pass through all thy flock, all your flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle. And all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come. When it shall come for my hire before thy face, every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, that shall be counted. In other words, what's going on here is, is he's saying that I will get of future, um, future born um, sheep and, and goats. Not, none, of, none of these are here today. I'm not going to get any, all of, all of what you have, you get to keep. But out of those that are born from them in the future that are speckled um, or spotted, I get those of all those that are born that are, aren't speckled or spotted, spotted, you get to keep those. And Laban's going to accept the deal, and Laban's going to go, and he's going to take all the, the current spotted and speckled one, separate them from the group, and so that whenever the, 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 the sheep and the goats that, that uh, Jacob is working with, they're all solid color. The, you know, without spot or blemish, they're the ones with, without the spot or blemish, so you would expect them to produce, more likely to produce, the good sheep. So Laban takes the ones that are most likely to produce the, the spotted and speckled, leaving Jacob with a basically one hand tied behind his back. But that one hand that Jacob has is what? God's hand. God's hand. Mm -hmm. So who's going to end up winning that? <laughs> it's going to work out really well for Jacob. In verse 34, Laban said, Behold, I would might be according to your word. In other words, okay, let's do it. And he removed, and at that point, Laban might have, a real wise person might have realized, well, wait a minute, you know, it was just a few verses ago that I just acknowledged my blessing was through you. So if I do this, if I set myself at odds against you, who do I think is going to come out on top on this? But it's not the way it worked out. And so he, re he removed the different goats and the ring strapped and spotted and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted. Everyone that had some white in it. And all the brown among the sheep he gave into the hands of his sons. And he set three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. So there's a three days' journey um, distance between Jacob's camp, campground area and where Laban is. Three days' journey. Verse 37, And Jacob mm -hmm. took him rods of green poplar, and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and piled white strakes in them and made them white. You know, we'll pass through this. Basically, all, what he's doing is, is that whenever he sees what he perceives to be the strong, uh, the strong animals, he, he puts these things down. And whenever he sees the weak animals, um, he removes them or vice versa. I forget which one it is, to be honest with you. Um, trying to propagate the strong animals. None of that's going to make a difference um, in the end. Um, so it's kind of interesting that he did that, but uh, whatever, he did it. And I'm sure God, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm sure, but I'm guessing God told him to. Verse 40, and Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring strake and all the brown of the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. And it came to pass, verse 41, whenever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the robs before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters. Verse 42, but when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban, Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. And so basically um, he, he grows quite wealthy. He's going to spend basically seven, seven years um, 
I think it's six years technically. I think he does a total total of 20 years um, with Laban. So, all right. Any questions? Or we'll move on to chapter 31. All right, chapter 31, verse 1. And he heard the word of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, and that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. And so here the sons are jealous. They see that, that Jacob is prospering. They see that this deal has gone south for them. And, um, and they, don't, they don't put it on any, you know, God's blessing, you know, Jacob. They put it on Jacob's is, is cheating. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban. And behold, it was not toward him as before. So in other words, he, you know, Laban's mannerisms reflected what was going on. And um, it was, you know, quite obvious. So much so that uh, Jacob is, is ready to get up and leave. Verse 3, And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers, into thy kindred, and I will be with thee. And so here the Lord uh, speaks to Jacob and tells him that he needs to leave. Remember, when Jacob was ready to leave after um, um, he served his time with Rachel, guess what didn't happen? The Lord didn't tell him to leave. Now, not saying he shouldn't leave, but the point of the matter is, is, is that um, he wasn't told to leave. Here now he's being told to leave. And what's one of the big differences between now and whenever he was ready to leave before? He has money. He's, he's well off. The blessing that God had promised to do, God has so fulfilled. And uh, Jacob, I think, understands and realizes that. And so he says to get back to your kindred, and I will be with thee. Verse 4, And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock, and said unto them, I see your father's countenance. It is not toward me as before, but the God of my father has been with me. And you know that with all my power I served your father. In other words, I, I did it honestly. I did it uprightly. I didn't cheat your father. I didn't try to, um, you know, swindle him in any way. I did, it, I, I did it an honest way. And your father had deceived me. Now, again, as we, as we get into this, we're going to see that there are, there's been details that we have not known about until this point. Your father has deceived me. He's changed my wages ten times. But God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And he, if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. In other words, God chose to bless me, and that's why it happened the way it did. I didn't cheat anybody. Your dad can't blame anybody except for God. The same God that provided and increased his flocks is the one who did it for me. Verse 9, Thus God has taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived, that I lifted up my eyes and saw a dream. And behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. And so here we get, I think, the answer to the, the question that we were talking about earlier. Um, did... Um, Jacob trick him. Well, notice what this says when this dream took place. It, did, it didn't take place beforehand, and it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw this. The agreement was done. Jacob went into it. That tells us. Jacob is, for the last little bit, we've been kind of um, harking on him a little bit. Here, Jacob is justified. He put his faith in the promise of God. He knew that God had promised to bless him. He makes an arrangement. He, he realizes that his blessing is going to be determined based upon God, which means he understands that what's been tra transpiring with Laban's uh, blessing was that God was blessing um, Laban through Jacob, just like we end up seeing with Jacob's son, Joseph, whenever Joseph gets down to, to Egypt. And so... Um, what a, to me, what an inspiring aspect. 
And, and I'm thankful to see this part when it comes to, to Jacob. And so, um, and he said, lift up now. And the angel of God spoke unto me in a dream saying, Jacob. And I said, here I am. Here am I. And he said, lift up now thine eyes and see. All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban has done unto you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointest, anointed the pillar. They say that elephant, elephants don't forget. Now God didn't forget this vow that, that uh, took place. It says, where you vowed a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out of this land, and return unto thy kindred. Turn to chapter 28 of Genesis, and we'll read this event again, just as a reminder. Chapter 28, start in verse 10. Genesis chapter 28, verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. Remember, this is whenever he was told to leave by Isaac. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took the stones of that place and he put them for a pillow and laid down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set upon the earth. And so here's that dream. And down in verse 14, And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He's getting Abraham's blessing. Verse 15, And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places where you go. That means where he was at this whole time in Mesopotamia under Laban's house. And he says, Bring thee again, uh, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. And J Jacob awoke out of sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, how dreadful is this place? There is none other. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow. And he set it for a pillar. And he poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz of the first. And Jacob, verse 20, vowed a vow, saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And so here's the vow. God has done exactly everything that he needed to do. Now it's time for Jacob to ante up. Time for him to pony up and, and fulfill his vow. And that's why in verse 13 of chapter 31 it says, I am the God of Bethel where you anointed the pillar, and where you vowed a vow unto me, now arise and get thee out of this land, and return to the land of thy kindred. Verse 14, And Rachel and Leah answered and said unto him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? So you can see that um, there's, Jacob didn't have the money to pay a dowry. Um, but what he did was, was he worked for 14 years and all of that financial benefit went into Laban, Laban's house. And is there anything left? Is there anything that's, that is ours from, from all of this? And so as a result, they're going to say, um, all right, well, we should uh, follow what you say. Verse 15, are we not counted of him strangers? That's an informative um, uh, sentence right there. Question. For he hath sold us and has quit, devoured also our money. For all the riches which God hath taken from our Father that is ours and our children's, now then whatsoever God hath said unto thee, do. And so um, they understand the situation. Verse 17, Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives upon camels, and he carried away all his cattle and all his goods which he had gotten, and cattle of his getting which he had gotten in Padamaram, for to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. Uh, and so, um, obviously, that by the time he gets there, Isaac will um, have passed, and so will his mother. And Laban went to shear his sheep, and Rachel had stolen the images that were her father's. And so these are the, 
the idols that um, Rachel had stolen. It's a big question as to um, why um, she would steal them. We do know that uh, this is idol worship because if you drop down to verse 30, what does he say about these idols or, or these images? He says, And now though thou wouldest needs to be gone because thou sore longest after thy father's house, yet wherefore hast thou stolen my gods? And so these would have been likely little figurine type of idols that, um, that Laban um, um, worshipped or um, did worship to. Remember Laban uh, was from the same family that Abraham was from. And we saw that Abraham's father was a maker of idols. If you go all the way back to whenever, whenever Abraham was told, told to leave his family, as we go from chapter 12 onward, we find out that Abraham's family, father was an idol maker. So Abraham came from a family that worshipped idols. He didn't come from a, a family that worshipped the true and living God. And so in that we can see God's grace. And, and when I say that, and we'll stop there, when I say God's grace, not just God's grace, um, with Abraham and his family. Because why did God, what is God's ultimate plan with calling out Abraham? To make a nation. To make a nation so that he could the save the, world, the Gentiles. To the nation. Right. And so ultimately, God's grace, as, as we see that even Abraham's family were all idol worshipers, God calls them out of that situation in, because of his desire and his plan to save us in the future, which was not known at the time, his desire to plan to save us, we can see God having grace even through Abraham because of his plan. We might wonder, some of us might say, why would God put up with that? Do you realize what the alternative would have been? If he wouldn't have put up with this, some of the silliness of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, what would, where would that have left you? Where would that have left me? And so uh, we should rejoice in God's love and his long suffering um, because that's what we're seeing a lot of through here is God for our sake also put up with that stuff. So, all right, any comments or question? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.